Now, from the bleachers to the end zones, Red Iron suckling down the coast. Live from the largest sports team on local television, this is Friday Football Focus. All right, welcome to uh, Friday Football Focus. I'm Mike Clan, pretty horse, but hey, the show goes on, of course. Second straight road test for Santa Barbara. The Dons won in Ventura last Friday, now trying to conquer the Spartans of Rio Mesa in Oxnard. And look at this, the sophomore, Monty Lopez, the interception, just the second place from scrimmage. He's really coming on for the Dons. That leads to an Abel Renteria touchdown, 7-0 Santa Barbara. They get the ball back, and there goes Renteria. 18-yard pickup, and then staying on the ground, Renteria moving those chains again, first down run, and then back on the ground this time, it's Coa Herrera. He gets a nice chunk of yards, another first down for SB. Woody Hayes is smiling with this drive. Kids ask your parents about Woody Hayes. Love the ground gain, and he uh, despised the forward pass. Renteria, second TD of the game, 14-0 SB. Now Rio Mesa, getting run over, but they do get a field goal late in the first quarter, 14-3 on the field goal. Dons, though, get another field goal, 27-yarder, 17-3. That was the score at half. Dons never threatened in this game. They went big, 30-10. Dons moved to 4-1 in the Channel League, 5-2 for the season as they enter their bye week. Well, Ventura was uh, the latest team to try to knock off undefeated Pacifica. Senator Ray De Los Santos has our report. That's right, Mike. A huge matchup tonight. Pacifica is looking to remain undefeated as Ventura is looking to be that team to hand them their first loss. Pacifica hosting the Ventura Cougars, who is coming off of a loss against Santa Barbara and Ventura coming out strong. Be picking up with the game scoreless in the first. The handoff to Gage Kushner and he brings the Cougars in scoring position. We'll head to the second quarter on fourth and goal. Cougars handing it off in Pacifica with a huge defensive stop to keep the game scoreless. Ventura's defense showing up two in this one. That's Tristan Phillips with the sack. He had a few of those tonight. Now a couple of plays later, Triton's quarterback Dominic Duran finds Isaiah Dillon and Dillon keeping his feet in the end zone for the first touchdown of the night. Pacifica leads it seven to nothing. Still in the second, Ventura's defense laying on the heat. That's Christopher Johnson and George Alvarez with the sack. Then Duran letting it fly. Zane McCauley all over this throw for the interception. But that's as far as Ventura would get with that possession. Pacifica up next and Duran hooking up with Dillon once again. And that is his second touchdown of the night. Pacifica now leads up 14 to nothing to the third quarter. Check out this play. Off the kickoff, Josh Joyner drops the ball but picks it up quickly and takes off. He heads down the sideline, 85 yards for the touchdown. Pacifica would go on to win this one 28 to 14 and remains undefeated. Up next, Pacifica will remain at home against Channel Islands and Ventura will hit the road against San Marcos. For Friday Football Focus, I'm Senorita Los Santos. All right, from the southern to the central section, Royal Grande took that big step last week in conquering the Mountain League. Tonight, the Eagles figured the soar in Napomo Day Valley has our highlights. Mike, this South County rivalry has been one-sided since it first started 15 years ago. In 2008, Napomo won the very first matchup, but since then, all Arroyo Grande, 13 consecutive wins. So history was definitely on the side of the blue and gold. AG's Mike Hartman, 10-0 all-time versus Napomo. Titan Stephen Field, 0-1 against his alma mater. Eagles quickly take control, less than two minutes in. Drake Missamore fires it right into the hands of Junior Hurley. Touchdown, AG, just like that, 7-0. Next Eagles possession, Napomo D coming up big. Griffin Grossart knocks the ball loose. Mason Bird there to come up with the fumble recovery. Titans with some momentum. Moments later, quarterback Blaine Lowry flushed out of the pocket, tucks it in, heads up field, and a nice gain into AG territory, but the drive would stall. Then last play of the first quarter on fourth and one. Hand off to Ben Walls, and he runs through a Napomo wall, somehow staying on his feet for a first down with a great effort. And a few plays later in the second quarter, Eagles back into the end zone. Missamore connecting this time to Caleb Clark. Touchdown, Arroyo Grande. That made it 14-0. It was 17-0 when the Eagles pretty much put it away. Hurley Heath with the short touchdown run. Eagles on their way to the win. Arroyo Grande goes on to beat Napomo 38-8. So the Eagles continue their dominance over the Titans. AG improves to 3-0 in the Mountain League. 
five and one overall. Up next, another road game. They'll be at Rigetti next Friday for Napomo. They dropped a zero and three in the Mountain League, two and four overall. They'll be at San Inez a week from tonight. In Napomo, I'm Friday Football Focus reporter Dave Valley. Back to you, Mike. All right, St. Joseph trying to bounce back from last week's loss to Royal Grande. Knights and San Inez Pirates in Orchid, along with a rooster, Kevin Roos. Hey, Mike, the road to the Mountain League Championship has gotten a little tougher for St. Joe and San Inez, but you can bet, come playoff time, both of these teams are going to be ready. Now, the last time the Pirates beat the Knights, Toby McGuire was still Spider-Man. Rihanna said we could stand under her umbrella, and gas was just over $3 a gallon. That was back in 2007. Let's see what 2023 has in store. In the last 11 years, these two teams meeting five times, but sporadically, on again, off again, on again, a lot like J-Lo and Ben. First quarter, second and a one. Dallas DeForest getting the sweep, getting past the defenders, and he's gone quick as a hiccup. It's 7-0 San Inez. They strike first. Knights responding also on second one, ironically enough. Carter Vargas going to get the call, going to get the sweep and the stiff arm, and takes it 37 yards into the end zone. We're tied up at seven. The student section loving it. Just don't forget to do your homework by Monday, kids. A little bit later in the game, about three minutes later, Nicholas Matawatia, a little swing pass out to who else? Vargas, and you can't stop him, can't even contain him, and he gets into the end zone again, and it's now 14 to seven, and Eloise doesn't look like it, but she was happy. Just under a minute to go in the first quarter, Matawatia handing it off here to Vargas, and again, Siri this time rerouting his course to the end zone, and he finds it. Wish she'd help me with the one-on-one traffic some days. 21-7 nights, and they were not done yet. After a San Inez fumble, St. Joe back in business. Little jet sweep action here to Carter Vargas. He'd have four touchdowns on the night. Knights up 28-7. They would roll big, 42-10 the final. Next week, they will host Paso Robles. San Inez will host Napomo in Orchid for Friday Football Focus. I'm Kevin Roos. Mike, back to you. More Mountain League action when we come back. Lompoc and Rigetti and Ocean League action with stops at Pioneer Valley and Cabrillo.